Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All Of Road. Given all the travel restrictions and the lockdown means I have quite a bit of time on my hands. On our last Fraser trip, I actually did a walkthrough of Scotty's amazing Nissan Patrol. One of the coolest touring rigs certainly I know and the Nissan Patrol uh, 4.2 was high up on the list when I was looking for a touring vehicle. I have done quite a few trips with Scotty. We've been to the New England Tablelands, to the New South Wales beaches. We've been uh, through the Simpson Desert via the Madigan Line, the French Line and some cross-country work. And we also have recently been on Fraser. So let's get into it. This is Scotty's Nissan Patrol 4.2. Ultima Tura. So give us a bit of a run around. Uh, well, um, yeah, it's a 2005 4.2 factory turbo diesel Nissan Patrol. The whole philosophy behind the build was reliability and capability and the two sort of intertwined. So if I, if I build a car that was capable then it was going to be reliable. So if I didn't have to push the car over hard obstacles, uh, less chance of breakage. And similarly, the 4.2 liter TD42 is just, it's, it's a bomb of, it, of an engine. It's just incredible. Uh, well known for its reliability. So yeah, I looked as well, <laughs> similar to Stefan. Looked at the cruisers. Um, I'm a patrolman family, so it was always going to be the case. I'd end up with a Nissan Patrol 4.2, and uh, here we are. Not much has stayed standard, <laughs> but that's not a bad thing. Yeah, so under the bonnet, I've made a few changes. Um, <clears throat> first of all, you'll notice this stainless intake. So that is a FATS fabrication unit, which came from, uh, I think, uh, Rockhampton. So I ordered that and the airbox was all one piece. As you can see, there's no joins. There's one singular join in here, silicon join, which is fully sealed. And one thing I've seen in the past with aftermarket um, snorkels or raised air intakes is there's a lot of joins in them. and. Yeah, I'm not convinced that they're completely waterproof. So I wanted something that I could actually drive the vehicle and being the 4.2, I can. Uh, oh, no, I've actually had this car through a Winnie Creek up to past here uh, in water. It was probably only that deep, like on my shoulder, but the water came up here and drove, drove it no problems, you know, correct air pressure, all that. So. I guess what I want to drum in here is the philosophy of my build is reliability. So over the years I've tried a lot of different lights. Um, in my previous role I was privy to use a lot of different gear and these are a standout for me, the Ultravisions. Um, they've, they've got newer models out now and really I'm not even tempted to try them. It's, these do the job well. I've got that was one of their prototypes, which is a tiny little light bar up the top there. Uh, as you can see, it's really badly mounted. I think I did that at about 1.30 a.m. before a Vikai country trip. But, um, so, I, I saw you, sorry, I saw you light up though two days ago on the beach yeah. on the east coast and it's daylight. Uh, mate, it puts out some hurt. So I've actually got that uh, top bar switch separately so I got that installed by an auto electrician and specifically asked for a separate switch reason being um, if I'm doing highway work I don't want glare off my bonnet and I have driven with that on uh, through northern Queensland and through skippy country and I don't think it gives that much benefit but in low range work the tight twisty stuff at night mm. which I happen to do because I do a lot of shooting. Um, it's it's a brilliant thing. Um, so other than that, you know, I've just got the simple whip antenna. Uh, everyone goes to the big ones. I got no problem with that. For me, this has always worked. The only problem I've ever had with one of these was that 
over corrugations on the Streslecki. I think I was heading to the Flinders. It snapped at about there, so bought a new one and bought a spare, which I've actually got in the back. Never had a problem with communication, ever. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, factory bull bar uh, under the bonnet. Factory lights, I've uh, put in HID globes. Under the bonnet, not much has changed other than the fats fabrication air box. So that's all part of the stainless steel raised air intake. Um, you can see there's nice big bends. So there's massive amount of airflow going straight into the turbo and that's a great thing. That combined with this aftermarket front mount intercooler, which I've put in. So there's not too many patrols where you can actually fit in a front mount intercooler without wrecking your front guard. Um, I managed to get this in, so it's four feet, uh, 450 mils by 30, 300 mils. Yeah, it's probably about 80 mil thick. So raised air intake, air box, intercooler, which you can see the piping under here, by the way. So this, this is all part of the intercooler piping here. It was all custom built. So factory, this engine has a top mount intercooler. Ditch that, you can see that there's a scoop designed to sit where the intercooler is. So that's been replaced by this unit. Um, also changed out the fuel pump, went to a 12 mil unit. Um, and that meant I had to change the clutch as well. So basically at the end of the day, it cost me about 13 grand and it's putting down about 240 horsepower at the rears on 35s. So uh, yeah, it gets, gets along well. Benefits are not only the added power, but it runs a lot cooler as well. So before with the factory HT18 turbo, uh, I've now got the TDO5, the UFI unit. It's, it's running, I'm lucky to get over 350 degrees yeah. EGT. Um, with the old one, I was regularly running up toward the 550, 600 mark, which is unhealthy for a turbo diesel. Other than that, just got the standard sort of dual battery setup, which is uh, pretty normal for a tourer. Suspension, the underpinning of the whole vehicle. Yeah, suspension is, and it's your best friend. If you get it wrong, you're just gonna have a crappy ride. So uh, I'll be honest here and say that I still haven't got it right. It's, I've had this car for about eight years and constantly searching for a good solution. Um, the, the latest iteration is I've got Fox 2.0 IFPs running on four inch coils. So they're Cal tuned by Cal off road. Uh, Cal off road coils. Everything underneath is completely adjustable. So I've got pan hard, you know, aftermarket pan hards, um, steering dampener, tie rod. Shocks are non adjustable though, huh? No, the shocks aren't adjustable. Yeah, so uh, the biggest problem I've got with those at the moment, which is it's a pretty big bugbear for me. Uh, I've done the Simpson in these, and for the last few years, I've sort of haven't really had to drive my own car because, you know, I've always driven Amarox or Pressies or whatever, and this is one thing I've really got to sort out now is this suspension. So looking at Stefan's setup with the Icon, it, I'm getting pretty jealous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what I'm seeing here is not enough up travel, so, Although it's a beautiful ride on corrugations, the bigger hits, I'm actually bottoming out. So I need that more up travel. So that's one thing I'm gonna work on. I'm not sure if I can fix that with valving or with a different shock length. I did look into shock length when I got these and it was basically this or something that was terrible. So yeah, probably not the greatest decision, but unless I push hard, um, it goes really, really well. It's like floating on a cloud, actually. But yeah, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Superior everything underneath. So I've got the 
Superflex arms, huh? Yeah, the, the hybrid Superflex arms. I've got the uh, sway, uh, what's it called? The Superflex sway bars. Everything underneath has changed and basically bulletproof, uh, including these tyres actually. So these are just 10 by 8 rims. Uh, what are they? Pro Comp. This is my second set. This is a brand new set, as you can see. Uh, the BF Goodrich KM3s. By far the best tyre, and I've tried an awful lot in my time. Everything. Uh, these are just legendary tyres. Yeah, I can concur. Best yeah. overall tyre you can get. Uh, mate, these are just incredible. It, it's really blown me away how Number one, quiet they are, how well they handle on wet tarmac, greasy tarmac, and how well they handle all sorts of bush conditions uh, and the puncture resistance and all that, you know, the sidewall armor, everything's just, yeah. I've busted plenty of tires and yeah, these, these are good ones. And when we drove up here to Fraser, uh, we drove through pretty much two days of nearly permanent torrential rain. Oh mate, it was pissing down, absolutely so. buckling down. And I've never had a tyre handle, just in normal, this is my daily driver, uh, around town, like roundabouts, things like that. I've never had a muddy, actually any four wheel drive tyre handle as good as these. Mm. Yeah, really good. Um, yeah, just got some power running up for the lights, so a bit of a dodgy install, but hey, it works. Uh, factory, actually I think that's a TJM roof rack, which I'm going to change out for a roller very shortly. Uh, this side I've got the Super Peg 270 awning, absolutely wrapped with it. It's, <laughs> I've managed to break it and I'll explain how I did that in a minute, but really good unit. Um, aftermarket sliders. sliders, yeah, so these are... These are something I had custom built by um, Marshall from, and Adam from All Bart Up, which is a local company where I live in Wollongong. And they don't muck around. I've actually sat the car down on these several times and yeah, not an issue at all. Rock solid. Um, up the back end, got the Long Ranger tanks. So I went for the main and auxiliary replacements. Anyway, to cut that story short, yeah, I've gone up to 215 litres on board with me all the time. So yeah, that, that's some pretty hefty range. I think last trip we did, what was it, Birdsville to Old and Dado? Mm. I pretty much made on just the main tank. Yeah, it and is a bit more frugal, your thing. Yeah, yeah, I think, what was I Used doing about or so less than my 16.9 eh? or 16.7? Yeah, no, I think so, it was um, 19 or so. Yeah, with all the fruit, all the power, yeah. I guess the benefit is you don't need to get so heavy on the throttle. So the factory bar is plastic and it's just absolute rubbish. Um, so this is actually a Millworld rear bar. It's the second one I had. The first one wasn't coated properly and had a lot of issues. Um, thankfully, they fixed it up. So they replaced the unit with one that was properly finished. Um, Inbuilt receiver. It's actually not rated this one, but if you've seen the way this is mounted, with it's way stronger than factory. Uh, yeah, I'll just keep this underneath, which is just an Anderson plug for charging. Here's the main Long Ranger. Uh, and then you'll see underneath, not only the fact oh, the non-factory shocks, but the, the rear, both diffs, I've actually changed the gearing in. Yeah, so running ARB air lockers, front and rear. And I've changed the diff gears to 4.6s. So factory on this is 4.11 and change them up to 4.6 to suit the bigger tires and diff. So with the 4.6s, it means I didn't have to change my transfer gearing ratios. Uh, there was two options I looked at was going to the 4.3s on the patrol and changing my transfer gear ratios or going the 4.6s with the 35s. 
and I actually opted for this latter option and put in Mark's Adapter's fifth gear replacement. So, so on the highway, I'm sitting at about 2,100 revs, which is perfect uh, at 110. I still maintain my low range gearing close to factory, which is awesome. And the only downside I'd have to say is that the step between fourth and fifth gear on the road, like as my daily is a, is a little bit tall. So I've actually got to rev it out a bit more in fourth gear to get to that comfortable space in fifth. And um, having a 12 mil pump, she gets a bit sooty. So you're living room kitchen set up. Let's quickly run you through. So uh, what I did is I wanted to maximize all the space I've got available and don't we all, um, and keep weight down where I could. So on the rear doors, I've got these awesome DCM Customs rear door diners. I think he's just a Facebook dude, but Jesus. Like I can actually put body weight on that. No worries at all. Same here, but I've got a bigger one. So that just folds up. Uh, here I keep my food and my junk. Up here is generally recovery gear, uh, tools. I've got little side pockets down there, which is where I keep pegs, ropes, um, some electrical gear like cables. Uh, this trip, oh, here we go. I've got this little switch here. So when we're sort of cooking at night, I've got these LED strips here and here, which effectively creates kitchen lighting. Um, I've got the light up top, of course. Uh, always carry this, which is a really nice, handy thing. So this is a... Um, oh, I forgot my one. Uniflame table. table. Uh, it's just handy. bloody awesome. So look at how thin it is, how light it is. It comes in this awesome case and you pop these lids out and boom, you've got a table. Uh, so I bought the car with this Black Widow system. But one thing that really bloody annoyed me was every time I wanted to bring the fridge out, I'd have to pull out all this crap and it just wasn't good enough. So I'd a, I chewed it over for quite a while and um, spoke to this dude who's a bit of a guru in fabricating in Wollongong and said, look, I want to actually create a shelf over my fridge and I want a divider and I want a top shelf. So I wanted the top shelf for photography gear, tripods, things like that, and also my rifles if I go shooting. So there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's like 10 working parts, which I had to draw up and including the straps up here, which tie the, the cargo barrier into, you know, something that's anchored. Lo and behold, I give him the drawings, come back like five days later and start piecing it together in the car and just, it all just worked. It all just tied in with the drawers. Um, so I picked it up, loaded it in the back seat, took it to a powder coater and boom, like seven years later, one of the best things I've ever done. So as you can see, I can bring out my fridge all the way out. Yeah, I don't have to take anything out to access that. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. brilliant. Got a water tank in the car? I yeah, see. so there's a 30 litre water tank behind these drawers here. Yep. Um, so the filler is actually behind these bags. I've got gear, I've got a chute here and my clothes bag. Yep. But behind all that is the filler. So I just put the hose in from the top and boom. Oh, 30 litres of water, uh, done 10, 10 days on Fraser with the missus and kids, and that's been enough. If I did it again, if I was to redesign all this, I'd go a bigger tank, like maybe 50, 60. Mm. Um, up there I've got my Doof Doof, love my music, so I've got a 12 inch sub, and on the back of this, <laughs> get in there, have a look at that. Oh yeah, that's it, your M. Yeah. Nice. Um, Spare wheel carrier, 
dual jerry on the other side. One thing that I'm uh, really disappointed with at the moment is uh, my inaction on getting a proper 12 volt system uh, sorted out. So future improvements, definitely my 12 volt battery system. Although I've got two of them, it's just not cutting the mustard at all. So with the fridge, the stereo, which I don't run when I'm camping, but just my general charging requirements, especially if I've got the fan bam along uh, with the kids opening the fridge all day, it's, it's just not doing the job. So definitely without a doubt I really need to upgrade my batteries to lithium and so seeing what Stefan has run on this trip has just been a real eye-opener for me. Um, I, I have worked with similar stuff in crew cars in the past but not as good as what he's got and yeah it's it's really opened my eyes to what's available nowadays and what you can actually you, you can put some serious lean on these batteries. Yeah, it's a nice little luxury that I definitely want to have, is um, upgrading these batteries. Because I tell you a little, little secret, all his gear is charging in my car at the moment. <laughs> Stationary here for two days, um, makes it a bit hard. Yeah, so there's a fly for you, mate. Yeah. Put that one on the blooper reel. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, right now, Stefan's got four of my GoPro batteries. He's charged one of my drone batteries. I haven't even gone into charging my uh, camera batteries because the the really shit thing with these lead acids is if you get below that, like say even 10 volt, if they drop below that, the battery's KO'd and it's flogged. So yeah, I'm sick of spending money on batteries. So it's gonna bite the bullet. Cool, yeah, early days for me, but so far the DCS dual lithium under bonnet setup has worked a treat. And uh, yeah, charge with uh, from the alternator, you know, yeah. from completely empty, 200 amp hours, I'm back up full in less than an hour. <laughs> oh mate, so. I'm so jealous. Like I'm watching, watching your figures and just, just blown away. The difference in technology. Yeah, they're yeah. bloody expensive, but far out. Anyway, thanks Scotty, that was a good run around. I think a lot of people are, are interested in that. And I think it's time for another swim, don't you reckon? Sounds good. <laughs> Please don't forget, if you enjoy my videos, like, subscribe and share and maybe even consider becoming one of my Patreon supporters. It would really help me out a lot.